Hello everyone, this is Mirko Ravanelli, and in this brief talk, I will introduce the PyTorch Kali Speech Recognition Toolkit that we have recently released to the community. So, what's that? PyTorch Kali is an open source toolkit that can be used to develop a state of the art speech recognition systems, in particular, DNN HMM speech recognizers. Uh, we developed PyTorch Kali in order to bridge the gap between the Kaldi and the Python toolkit, trying to hopefully inherit the efficiency of Kaldi and the flexibility of PyTorch. Uh, the toolkit is an open source toolkit that uh, everyone can uh, modify, can redistribute, uh, everyone can contribute to this project and it can be used. Uh, it, it's actually mainly intended for uh, research purposes, but can be used for both commercial and non-commercial purposes. You can find the code in the repository link below, and you also can find the paper, which is an, on our on archive. Well, actually, uh, PyTorch Kaldi is much more than a simple interface between these toolkits, because we basically implemented several useful features and utilities that will hopefully help user to develop more easily um, a speech recognition system. For instance, in PyTorch Kali, we have implemented several uh, models, both fifth forward models like MLP, CNN, but also recurrent models like LSTM, GRU, and the recently proposed Light GRU. In the repository, we all also implemented the, the SyncTend model, which turn out to be very, very effective to, um, to train a neural network from the um, raw audio samples directly. Also, when we uh, develop PyTorch, the, the PyTorch Kali toolkit, we basically try to provide a very easy and flexible configuration of files. Basically, the idea here is that uh, for most of um, the experiment, you, you would like to run, you have to just modify a configuration file rather than um, directly modifying the, um, the Python code. Another very interesting uh, feature of PyTorch Kali is that it is able to naturally implement uh, complex systems that can be based on concatenation of multiple features, labels, and neural architectures. For instance, uh, we can easily implement this chain of computation in which we have first uh, a CNN fed by filter banks that uh, um, is employed to extract some useful representations, some useful features of the, um, of, of the input features. Then we have an LSTM to process the temporal evolution of the sequence. And then we have an MLP that estimates the final phone state posteriors. This is an example, but we can even employ much more complex systems like this, where we have an input three different features, we process all the features with the independent neural network, then we employ a recurrent neural network based on GRU, and then we have the MLP. So this is just an example that shows you that you are able to, comp to, to employ systems characterized by the presence of multiple features, multiple labels, and multiple neural networks together. Okay, another interesting characteristic of PyTorch Kali is that it is designed in order to easily plug in user-defined models. For instance, if you have developed your model, I don't know, for um, language modeling, computer vision, and you would like to try it also for um, for speech recognition, this is very natural within the PyTorch Kali toolkit. Uh, we wrote a lot of documentation uh, about how to do it, but uh, what you have to basically do is to write a Python class, a Python class based on two methods. Uh, the first one is just for initializing your parameters, and the, the second one, the forward method, is uh, to define the computational chain. Uh, this is a rather interesting characteristic of PyTorch Kali because it allows people to plug in their model 
even without being 100% familiar with the complex pipeline that characterizes a modern speech recognition system. Moreover, the toolkit is optimized to work both locally or on a computer cluster. Uh, it uh, implements also an autom automatic recovery strategy to restart the training from the last chunk that has been processed correctly. Uh, we also support multi-GPU training. We provide some toolkits to, um, to help hyperparameter tuning. And um, last but not least, we release uh, a lot of documentation with some tutorials that help people, can help people to familiarize uh, with this toolkit. So what the basic architecture of uh, PyTorch can be? Basically, we start from the row signal and we can extract some kind of features from the row signal like NSC, filter bank or uh, all uh, the typical features that we use for speech recognition. This can be done using Kali. Uh, also, the label computation, uh, which requires forced alignment and stuff like that, is also um, inherited from Kali. Then we feed both the features and the labels into uh, our PyTorch implementation of the EcoC model that provides some posterior probabilities over phone states. We uh, feed these posterior probabilities into the Kali decoder and we finally uh, have uh, the, the text uttered uh, inside our speech waveform. Okay, let me now show you some uh, baseline that we can achieve with the PyTorch Kali toolkit. In particular, let, let me first show you some results on the TIMI dataset and we can extend uh, the experimental evidence uh, to other uh, data set to other corpora at the end of this presentation. Um, in particular here, table one shows the four nano rates that is obtained uh, on the test set of TMIT with various neural architectures and various um, acoustic features. Here, uh, for instance, first of all, what you can see is that FMLLR features um, are uh, better than standard MFCC and FMAT features, and this is actually not really surprising because with FMLR we use speaker adaptive training. Uh, regarding the model, one can first note that uh, and the, ML, the, the, the recurrent models are actually much better than the fit forward model, as you can see uh, from uh, RNN, LSTM, and GRU results. And, um, uh, also interesting to note that the best model is the light GRU model. Light GRU model is a simplification of the GRU model that we have recently introduced and turned out to really uh, be very, very helpful in speech recognition as emerged from this paper that we have recently published on, um, on a journal. Um, the best results we were able to obtain is this 14.2, which is a very, very good result for TMIT. Um, in particular, this, this result is obtained after applying many techniques, many tricks. Uh, and in the table 2, we basically highlight the impact of these techniques and these tricks, uh, still using FMLR features. Uh, here, the first line shows uh, a very simple baseline using um, different models, including the light GRU model one, which you can see that with a very simple baseline, the light GRU model gives us a, just 16.3%. And then we apply, uh, progressively apply some techniques. The first one is um, uh, consists in increasing the maximum sequence length during training. So basically, we start training with short sequences and we progressively uh, increase the sequence length during training. This is a very interesting strategy because uh, it naturally implements a kind of uh, curriculum learning strategy. Because we, first of all, at, at early stages, we first we force the neural network to focus on short term dependencies and we allow the network to focus on longer-term dependencies only 
uh, at, a, um, at a later training stage. The third row here shows the uh, performance improvement that we can obtain with your current dropout. Here, uh, dropout is, uh, uh, is, apl is applied, uh, basically the, the dropout mask is applied, is the same for all the time steps. Then the other row shows the results we have obtained using batch normalization, in particular here, batch normalization is applied only to fit for a connection, which is uh, uh, really, really helpful. And then the last row shows the results we have achieved with uh, monoform regularization. Monoform regularization is a very simple technique in which we jointly train context-dependent and context-independent targets in a multitask way and we basically uh, improve the, the performance and we finally reach our 14.2% that is the same we have um, we highlighted in table 1. Well, uh, as we outlined the first part of the presentation, uh, PyTorch Kali can be used to employ kind of complex acoustic model characterized by the presence of multiple neural networks and uh, multiple features. Uh, with this regard, Table 3 compares the, the best results we have obtained so far, the famous 14.2%, with a more complex pipeline characterized by um, multiple neural networks and multiple features. In particular, we feed a neural model with MFCC, FBank, and FMLR features, and we process the concatenation of these features with MLP, LightGRU, and another MLP model. So, pretty complex system. Uh, the results here we obtain is a 13.8%, which, according to the best of our knowledge, is the best result so far published on this dataset. Table 4, instead, um, shows the results that are obtained when feeding the acoustic model directly with the uh, raw samples, instead of using uh, features we just direct, uh, we, we, we directly uh, feed the neural network with the, the raw samples, basically. Uh, here we compare, basically, uh, the second uh, row, show the performance uh, obtained with uh, a standard CNN, and the third one, uh, show the performance we have achieved with uh, the recently proposed uh, Simplan model. Uh, if you would like more information on the Simplan model, you can take a look into these publications. But what is interesting here is that even uh, with a um, small dataset like Timid, we are able to outperform not only a CNN fed by standard row features, fed by row features, but also a CNN fed by standard filter map features, and this is, I think, an interesting result we have obtained. Okay, in this last slide, we extend our previous results to larger datasets such as DIRA, CHIME, and LibreSpeech. In particular, the first column of Table 5 reports the results we have obtained with DIRA, which is a, a dataset recorded in a domestic environment that is characterized by the presence of both noise and reverberation. The second column reports the results we have obtained with Chime, again, a very noisy dataset based on Wall Street Journal sentences. And the last column report the, finally reports the results obtained on LibreSpeech, actually the uh, 100 hour dataset. Uh, for all the datasets, we were able to achieve very good results. Uh, showing that, uh, confirming actually, that um, PyTorch Kali can be used, effectively used, to develop state-of-the-art speech recognition systems. Okay, conclusion. Um, in this brief presentation, we have seen that uh, PyTorch Kali can be used to effectively design and develop state-of-the-art speech recognition systems. However, the project is still in its initial phase and we would like to invite all the potential contributors to participate in it. Um, we in fact hope to build a community of developers larger enough to progressively maintain, improve and expand the functionalities of this toolkit. 
that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Feel free to go to the repository and give us uh, your feedback, which will be really precious to improve the current version of our toolkit. Thank you.